how to begin our conversation on why uh, banks directed to recapitalize, well, it's very important we actually talk about that. Well, despite the fact that the CBN governor recently said uh, uh, the banks are uh, somehow safe, sound, and stable. Why do we need to recapitalize? It, it became necessary to recapitalize banks, um, knowing that the value of our currency today has been so reduced. Um, exchange rates has made the, the capital base of banks to have very low value um, compared to international standards. And of course, we are operating in a global market. And so when you see the value of the capital base of uh, commercial banks in Nigeria, based on the current exchange rate, we are just nowhere. And so um, to imagine that there is no bank in Nigeria that comes, uh, that is ranked first to 10 in, in Africa is embarrassing to, to, to this country. So you see that the need for capitalization became necessary, especially now that we have an um, exchange rate that is as high as above 1,000 um, naira per dollar. You know, so it enables banks, it will just enable banks to be able to expand their frontiers, the frontiers of their businesses, and to be able to do better funding of uh, transactions that can actually not threaten their, their existence. Uh, today, you see that a lot of banks uh, shy away from certain transactions just because they have long tenure and be, maybe because of the volume of business. But once they, 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 they are recapitalized, they will be able to handle um, bigger transactions and uh, transactions with heavier funds and longer tenure. So th that is just why it is necessary. And again, you see that uh, a lot of, because we are just uh, um, having to do a lot of uh, fintech transactions, uh, banks actually need more funding to be able to fund whatever thing that will be required to expand the capacity of their fintech uh, capabilities. Okay. Well, uh, for 500 billion for banks with international authorization, what 200 billion for national banks, is it a mountain to fly? It is a mountain to fly because uh, even as big or as high as 500 billion naira looks, when you actually convert that amount in dollars, it's only giving you about 417 uh, million dollars okay. compared to the kind of uh, uh, capital base of uh, probably the biggest bank in Africa, the Standard Bank uh, Group, mm -hmm. uh, that has about uh, uh, up to 14 billion dollars wow, as a capital base. And so if you compare 417 million to 14 uh, billion dollars, it's, it's a far cry. It's actually the, the gap is so much. So we need to actually come close to how big other banks are in Africa so that we can even come up to um, first 10 in ranking. That okay. way, we will be able to beat our chest to say we are doing well. Okay. Uh, 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 to, for that to happen, what do we need to do? Um, I honestly w expect that the government, uh, well, the CBN will uh, encourage uh, inflow of foreign currency into the country to be able to fund this for two reasons. It will re uh, bring a lot of liquidity that is lacking in that foreign currency area um, again, uh, of course, when that happens, you see that they are go we're going to have more revenue to be able to fund the foreign currency demand. Um, the second thing it will do is the fact that uh, foreign direct investment will just increase in Nigeria, and we're going to have that. Uh, so that, you know, and when that happens, it will be easy to fund some of the transactions we have today in foreign currency. And again, um, we need to expand the frontiers. Uh, we need to expand the frontiers of our business so that, but if it is done in foreign currency, it will be in our interest to do so. And so that we expect a CBN to encourage foreign direct investment coming in that area to be able to have funding for our lack of, <laughs> of, of uh, depleted uh, revenue from, from that area. Okay, are we likely to see more of uh, margins and takeover, or are we likely to see uh, a lot of the banks going to uh, uh, the equities market to uh, move for this or to meet of their uh, capital requirements? Okay, um, when this happened in 2004 and 2005, uh, a lot of mergers 
took place, a lot of acquisitions took place. We also saw a few banks that went the whole hog um, to uh, increase the size of their capital base. Uh, but of course, you know, moving from where we are now to 500 uh, billion naira is not an easy jump. And so we expect a lot of measures to happen. And, uh, but I can tell you that a lot of banks are already making efforts to, to recapitalize themselves because the signals that this was going to happen, the signals were there. So they already went ahead to start making all the efforts to recapitalize. But I know that a lot of them may not be able to um, do it alone, so measures will happen. Some other banks may also want to reduce their, their, their size, uh, maybe come, move from international to national, or move from national to region, uh, regional in order for them to um, meet this requirement. And I see that uh, it is possible that there may be some acquisitions Unfortunately, when this happens, uh, certain things happen also. Mm. And they order the, flip, the other flip side, which is the fact that a lot of people may lose their jobs because when banks merge, okay. uh, you see that many functions are duplicated, and so um, some people may have to lose their jobs, and those are the other disadvantage of this. But uh, the, the positive side of it is going to make our financial system more stable and stronger to do better business and more business. Okay, after all is said and done, uh, where will our banks be in terms of financial services and investor confidence? When this happens, you see that um, a lot of services are going to be included in whatever that has been um, offered right now. When it happened, like I said, it, it, the last time it happened in 2005, uh, a lot of uh, banks had more capabilities uh, to actually expand their ICT areas more branches at that time happened. But of course, today, in the kind of banking we're doing today, we don't even need all those banking, uh, all those branches, um, number of branches to expand. What we need is a bigger capability in, um, in FinTech so that we can render more and more services without having to move from one point to another. So we expe expect that uh, there will be more capacity to handle all those FinTech transactions. Recall that at the time there was this uh, need for fintech transactions when um, people couldn't do a lot of uh, uh, physical cash movements um, when the new naira was being introduced we saw the jamming of uh, fintech uh, areas of banks to the extent that they couldn't carry the capacity of the number of people that wanted fintech uh, transactions so this is going to be a window for them to expand that capacity and capability to be able to handle more and of course look at other areas of financial services they can actually include in the services they render. Okay, how, how well is how, how well positioned is the uh, equities market in providing the right platform uh, for banks to achieve uh, their recapitalization objective? I can tell you, we have one of the best equity equities market in the in Africa. Um, they have been positioned. They have been there before. They had, they did it before, and a lot of asset management uh, companies are there trying to take advantage of this uh, opportunity to get people either through a public offering or, or private placement. Of course, many of them may still go to for private placement. There may be rights issues if the shareholders actually still have um, money to bring in. So um, we expect that the market is OK, ready for it. Um, we, we, like I said, we have a good number of very qualified uh, institutions to handle this kind of uh, merger or this kind of increase that's going to happen. We have one of the best in Africa. Okay. Uh, what challenges or obstacles do you foresee in the implementation of this? Uh, okay. Uh, usually when this kind of thing happens, mm. a lot of uh, disagreements mm. between one board or the other. A lot of, uh, um, let me not call it, a lot of figures are going to be imagined that are either not exactly what they are supposed to look like in order for certain institutions to look good or better than others. Mm. You know, so certain disagreements are going to happen uh, when we see one board of directors, another set of uh, board of directors, thinking they don't want to lose their positions and their equity holding, you see that uh, it's going to bring some disagreements and uh, probably um, some litigations may happen. Um, again, if those happen, you see that uh, some banks may actually drop completely and not exist again if they cannot cope with the entire thing. But of course, there's no threat to that because once you are no longer able to ha handle this, 
um, some investors are able to take you over and bring in more funds to take you over. So I don't think there's any threat to share, um, uh, deposit holdings of uh, customers who have their banks in these banks. Okay. And so uh, there shouldn't be any threat to, 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 to funds that are already existing in banks. Okay. Now, an additional 200 basis points uh, was somehow added to the interest rates at the end of the monetary policy uh, committee meeting, uh, making cost of borrowing higher. Where do small-scale enterprises turn to for credit with high cost of operation as well? Uh, well, I, I agree, obviously, that it is a problem for small and uh, middle-scale uh, entrepreneurs because the cost of borrowing today has been heavily increased because of the high rate of NPR. Um, but again, there are some other options. The options of the develop development institutions like uh, BOI. Okay. Uh, BOI, again, will always be there to give um, interest rates that are not as high as commercial bank rates. But where do they get their own money from? <laughs> well, you know, that's why they are a development bank. <laughs> okay. Development bank because uh, they are not following the rates of uh, NPR okay. and they are giving those uh, funds from CBN and other sources to be able to at, at lower rates and not uh, just like um, um, uh, subsidized rates, you know, given to them. So they, they're able to use it to grow the economy and people can come and borrow from there to do their own businesses. So if commercial banks' rates are high for a certain set of people, they can actually try some development banks like uh, BOI and others. Okay. Now, uh, with the uh, reforms that we have seen and uh, we've started to see a kind of improvement. Uh, we've seen the uh, forex market is gradually stabilizing, but uh, that has not impacted on prices yet. Uh, when do we get to see that? Okay, so you, we, for us to imagine, for, for what we're seeing today as an improvement in the forex market, we need to identify what and what that are causing uh, that. And of, of course, we also know that there are some other things that are impacting on prices of goods and services, not just the foreign FS, FS rates. Of course. We know that uh, the cost of production is high coming from the cost of running your generator. Yes. And we know today the national grid is having issues. Yeah. So a lot of people are depending on their generators and other source, alternative sources of uh, energy. So when, when, when we do that, you see that uh, cost of production is still going to be high. Cost of doing business is still going to remain high, not just only on FX. So um, we expect that over time, maybe in the next few months, as the exchange rate continues to go down, it will start bringing down prices. If every other thing improves, like I mentioned, if the cost of energy, uh, power, if they all improve, then we're expecting to have reduction in prices of goods and services.